Howdy! Welcome to the first part of what I hope is going to be a 20 or so episode cooperative series called Path to Tarkov. In this series, we'll play as one of several task force agents tasked with investigating the developing situation in Tarkov. The agent we're going to play is undercover as one of the many abandoned USEC contractors. Sound a bit too complicated, so let me explain. Terror Group has done some shenanigans that led to the clash with local law enforcement. The situation spiraled out of control and resulted in Tarkov State today, a lawless civil war zone dominated by mercenaries and local thugs. Myself, along with a few other Task Force 303 community members, will take the roles of Task Force intelligence officers or just agents, pretending to be abandoned contractors. We'll have to establish a hideout and gather equipment to sustain further intelligence operations in the region. The whole thing will take place in SPT, short for Single Player Tarkov, a modification for the base game that allows you to play the game completely offline on a server hosted locally. And before you ask in the comment section, yes, it does require a legit copy of the game to run properly. And no, you cannot transfer items, skills, hideout facilities, or any other form of progress from your main target profile to SPT, and vice versa. During the campaign, all participating players share progress in building the hideout. This means that whenever I level up my workbench or generator, the rest of the participating players level up theirs as well, automatically. And of course, so do I. We have a common fund for money we can add to or take away from. If I feel like I have extra cash laying around in my hideout, I can donate some of it to uh, that fund. That way, agents that are running low on cash can help themselves by taking some of the money out of this fund. With that out of the way, let me introduce you to our agent. Meet Martin White, a senior intelligence officer for the task force put in charge of operations in Tarkov. He will be tasked with leveling up the task force hideout and gaining favors with the local traders. On his way in, Martin brought a limited assortment of weapons, gear and medicine, along with food and water to last him for a few days. His primary weapon is a lightly modified M4A1 with a foregrip, flashlight and red dot sight. In his holster, Martin is packing a Glock 17 with a flashlight laser combo. For close ranges, he has the Mossberg 590A1 at his disposal. And for the times he really needs to reach out and touch some enemies, the Remington 700 is there to provide. Finally, the trustworthy Colt 1911 is around for the occasional need for nuking Task Force enemies with the almighty 45 ACP. After all, this weapon is responsible for winning my two world wars. It certainly wouldn't fail in some proxy contract war in Russia, right? Back on track with the main objective at hand, the hideout. The first thing would be to establish security. To do so, we need to find a measuring tape, the cache we already have available. Once security is handled, we'll need some illumination. Candles will do fine for now, but we'll need a cricket lighter to light them up. We'll also need a place to rest. Again, the money is not going to be an issue. All we need is some matches and duct tape. When we have somewhere to rest, we need to worry about our heating. For the time being, some matches will do the trick. Finally, a workbench would be ideal for maintaining our weapons and gear. To set one up, we'll need a few screws and bolts, along with a Leatherman multi-tool to tighten them up. We can go about it in two ways. One of them is buying the items from the local traders. At hand we have Mechanic. He's our go-to man for high-end weapons and attachments. Sadly, none of the things we need for our hideout can be sourced through him. 
That's where Fence comes in. He has a vast assortment of items to sell. Sadly, none of those items come in great quantity. We just need to keep an eye out for anything we need every now and again. The rest of the traders are inaccessible from our hideout. We'll need to move to different locations in order to access them. The other way we can do it is raid for the things we need. Going into a location, scavenging through it and extracting whatever we find back to our hideout. That is, if we don't get murdered by the local thugs, more commonly referred to as scavs. The mechanic presents us with two tasks. The second one takes priority. The introduction. We need to go to woods and quote, look where the hunter would wait for his prey, where the iron bird has fallen, end of quote. A package containing encrypted information is waiting for us there. We need to deliver it back to Mechanic. In return, he'll introduce us to the man who stashed the package, Jaeger. To infiltrate the woods, we need to pass through the Polycan factory complex. Extracting to its gate zero would lead us straight into our objective area. All we can do now is check our kit and get going. As you could guess, our first raid does not go as planned. Земляк, мы стрелять не хотим, мы так наблюдаем. Нехороший вы, блядь, человек. Вали хуй!
Пожрать бы, конечно, не помешало. Вон он, вон он, блядь, ебашь его! Ты что там, бля, вообще, тупый? Не, блядь, жрись, сука! Вон он, упы! Давай, мать! Ах ты то! Тут нашу завалили! Кидаю гранату! Граната тут! Куда он застерился-то?
As you saw, we stumbled upon a far fight between rival PMCs and local scouts by one of the factory office entrances. For better or worse, we became part of said engagement, eliminating the contract with Duo along with two bandits. With all the kit laying around, we had to shift our mission priority. Instead of proceeding to Gate Zero, we looted up and fell back to our hideout. Stashing the valuables for later use and aiming for the woodsbound extraction at a later time took priority. Everything we managed to take out of that raid will certainly be of use in one way or another. The majority of the items we'll keep around in our stash, but some bring more value if sold. After all, liquidity is necessary for the long-term sustainment of our intelligence gathering operations in the region. And now, with us being back in the relative safety of our hideout, it's time to put in the work for its upgrades. For the time being, we can only handle two of the upgrades. The first one being illumination, using the cricket lighter we found, and the rest space. For the latter, we'll be using the box of matches we picked up, along with the roll of duct tape. With all the available upgrades out of the way, we can repack our kit and prepare for the next expedition of our very own Path to Tarkov. I was your host, Teddy Tactical, and I'll see you in the next chapter.